Hello everyone, this is Imi Chicken, and welcome to our channel. Today we got sent a package free from the nice guys at TomTop. They asked us to review their Q90 handheld. This took three days to get to my house and BANG! Wow. Let's try that again. Will it work a second time? Ugh. No. Okay. Slice! Alright, now BANG! Wow, this is amazing. It's a box. To be fair, it's actually quite a nice box. Look at this. Mmm. Yeah. Very boxy, alright. Comes with a handheld 64-bit OS. To be fair, you never know what's in these boxes until we check it out. Here we go. I lay up. And one, one second. The console's the wrong way around. Ah, who cares? Right, let's see what it looks like. Ooh, this looks really nice. The buttons and the D-pad feel a lot like, hmm, imagine marshmallows mixed with mint. Analog stick is not great. Let's see what we have inside. It's a... Uh, it's a CP. CP. Maybe best to change it for a real sand disk if you have the time. On the left, we've got the power switch. On the top, we have USB-C to recharge the batteries. On the front, we have eight buttons. And as I said before, they don't feel bad at all. Maybe great for kids. We also have a headphone socket. Three and a half mil. Volume rocker on the side. No need, as we can change volume using hotkeys anyway. On the back, we have two speakers. I like my stereo sound. Let's open this little compartment here. We can find these rechargeable batteries online from around $5. And behind it, we have uh, nothing. This handheld is fairly small. So for the size comparison, let's use a banana. The Power Kitty Q90 is 80% of a banana big. Here's some of the specs. Things to take note of are that it's $36 and it has an IPS screen. The system it runs on is Gmenu NX. From here we can select the system or game that we want to play. For example, if we want to play a Mega Drive game, we press on the MD button. Then it'll give us a list of games that we can select from. If we push one of the top buttons, there are other menus too such as Homebrew, Ports, Play Quake, Pang, Open Turian. There are applications and also a settings menu. Here we can change the language and also skins and other bits and bobs. The Q90 is a multilingual plastic brick from the future. The firmware is from 2019. CPU menu, you can see the speed that this machine is running at. Unfortunately, you cannot change any of these settings. Here is a skins menu. You can choose from one of the default skins, or you can place the microSD in a computer and then fiddle around with the files. Whenever you wish to turn off your system, it is best to use this icon here, much like the shutdown menu on a computer. A bit weird, because then you have to switch it off like so. You can choose to put the system in a suspend mode, but it does actually eat up a lot of battery. Let's check out some games. Here's Game Boy, and Mario is Stretch Pants. For each system, we have a menu where we can change some options. Save, load state, controls, and also video options. I'm actually quite impressed with this screen. But how is the sound? Much like those mobile phones with a speaker on the back, we need to cup our hands to project the sound towards us. There is a clear separation of stereo, and these speakers are loud enough for this handheld. It's a bit of a shame that they point away from the user. Yar. Let's try a different game. Oh yeah. Ah, I gotta change settings again. Oh yeah. What is that sound?
yeah, Game Boy has some issues with the sound. <laughs> Luckily, we can update the software to fix this bug. <laughs> All right, let's check out some other games. Here is the Game Boy Advance. Here's some Super Nintendo. Mega Man X. Easy game to emulate, but not for this system. You see the FPS can drop to around 36, 31. Streets of, oh my god. Yep, yeah, wrong button. So with all the games I tested, we can pull up the option screen. With Mega Drive, we can change controls and save our preferences. A is this one, B is, there we go. There's a bit of Capcom vs SNK. Whoops. Yes. We do some nice D-pad moves. Yeah. My favorite. PlayStation seems to run all right, but it's fairly underpowered for the more demanding games. We can see that even Resident Evil 2 here doesn't run at a solid 60 FPS. Moving on to some arcade titles, this is where the device shines. All of the Tate games are rotated to use the whole screen. I remember doing this on the original PSP, and it was lovely. Here's some Dodon Patch. And a side shooter, Carrier Air Wing. This is supposed to be the sequel to Area 88, also known as UN Squadron. Neo Geo games use the Universe BIOS 2.3, it's fairly old. The audio emulation did sound a bit off there, but for the whole, Metal Slug runs really well. Let's see if we can push in for a bit of a close-up on the pixels. The three-inch IPS display runs fairly bright. The colors seem very saturated. Bit of a love or hate thing. But then bezels though. So putting the micro SD into the PC, we can actually copy over some ROMs. This one's Game Boy Advance. We can see distortion on the text. So I'm gonna go into options and change to unscaled 3.2. And then turn off screen filtering. Check this. So we can see the pixels, but it leaves us with essentially a double bezel. Hey baby, how's it going? And I tried adding some main titles. While Turtles is playable, there is a little bit of slowdown in MAME. It's more prominent in Mortal Kombat. Old school. Quake! Even Streets of Rage Remake is on here. To be fair, it's a bit slow.
Rise of the Triad has problems. So, Russ at Retro Game Corps made a guide for the V90. The underlying system is the same as a Q90, so you can update all the emulators and even use a custom firmware. I checked out Miu and found that the Amstrad CPC was running a little slow, C64 had some problems, and yeah, Amiga was running not too bad, but the sound was a bit off. Doom, however, ran great. So, pros and cons. The bright IPS screen was very welcome, as was the ability to change aspect ratio for most of the emulators. Tate mode, or the vertical mode, oh, was brilliant. D-pad and buttons, perfect for kids, and being able to change emulators took me back to the days of the PSP. Cons, bit underpowered. There's no real excuse for the rear-facing speakers. Suspending nothing but eat battery, and to shut down the device is nothing but an annoyance. Oh, and this stick is hard and pointless. In conclusion, the Pow Kitty Q90 would be a great gift for a child for the first handheld. Or even those that enjoy arcade shooters. Or those that need something to play when they're pooping. On the flip side, I do not recommend this for the perfectionist. If this handheld does interest you, I've added the affiliate link in the description below. Hope you enjoyed our review. And if you wish to see more, please like and subscribe. Catch you in the next video. Ta-ra!